Hi, I want to welcome the viewers to another edition of Bill's Bullpen. I'm Bill Doherty, and I want to uh, tell you about uh, what's going on both in Bourne and also in the region. And today I have two lovely guests. I usually don't have two pretty girls that on at the same time. And I'll let them introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Debbie Oliveri from the Bourne Council on Aging. I'm the director. I'm Kari Finney from the Council on Aging. I'm the assistant director, outreach coordinator. Council on Aging, it sounds like us old folks needs a lot of support, but Council on Aging is, is the name of it, but what, what do you guys do? Well, um, we do a lot of different things. So, you know, we are here for the, um, the citizens of Bourne, uh, age 60 and over. Mm -hmm. um, we have a variety of programs, both services, which Kari oversees all the outreach services, such as fuel assistance, SNAP applications, um, housing applications, homelessness. We also run a variety of programs. Um, we have all kinds of recreational programs. We have fitness programs. We have quilters and rug hookers and crafters and knitters, we, knitters and yoga and drum circle and Reiki and all kinds of, all kinds of things to entertain you. Okay, having said all of that, mm -hmm. um, there's also an organization that uh, I uh, contribute money to. It's called the uh, Friends of the Council on Aging. The Friends of the Council on Aging are a separate organization. They mm -hmm. are a 501c nonprofit. We are a municipal government. So we have a town budget. We are paid through the town. So we're the government agency. We're a referral agency. Um, they, their purpose is to fundraise and they also oversee the food pantry. Okay. Now, you had mentioned your outreach, and this is very important because I know a lot of folks depend upon the fuel assistance. Uh, talk a little bit about how you become qualified or eligible to receive fuel assistance. So fuel assistance is income-based, um, so depending on the number of people in the household and how much money all of them um, make together mm -hmm. um, determines if they qualify or not. Um, the program starts November 1st, and they would call me to schedule an appointment. If people are questioning if they qualify, they should definitely call me and apply and see what happens. And I can also do food stamp applications at the same time um, and make referrals to the food pantry. Talk a little bit about the food stamp program, because I understand you don't get stamps anymore. You get a card? You get a card an EBT card. Now what does the EBT stand for? Electronic Banking. Banking. I'm okay. not positive exactly now, of the acronym. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about uh, abuse of, you know, of those cards. Uh, what, what can you use the card for? So people can use it for food. They can't use it for toilet paper, paper towels, tissues, things like that. But they can use it for basic food. Mm -hmm. They can't purchase anything that's hot. It has to be something that's cold. I so they I can't buy like a rotisserie chicken that's already cooked. Really? Um, yeah, it has to be cold food. Oh, that, that's kind of interesting because uh, you know, I think about the energy that it takes to, let's say, to, that uh, you would have to use to cook a chicken, for example. Mm -hmm. And um, buying a rotisserie chicken, you know, might make sense in that case, but uh, the rules are usually set by somebody in a faraway land called Washington, D.C., <laughs> who really sometimes have no connection with reality whatsoever. Uh, the other thing you mentioned was uh, uh, eligibility for housing. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I had been a, uh, a Housing Authority member you know, for many, many years. As a matter of fact, the only, reason, the only way I got off the Housing Authority was I had to move out of town, out of Howard, because I could never get anybody to, you know, to, to replace me. I always got the story, yes, Bill, it's a great idea, but mm -hmm. not this year. Well, <laughs> and, uh, the right year you know, never came. Uh, what exactly is involved in making an application for housing? What, you know, what do you have to show? So uh, the beginning stage is a basic application, and then people have to submit bank statements. They have to submit their income. They have to submit a quarry, which is a criminal record check. And then as the process goes on, they'll ask for more information. So um, the one mistake that people sometimes make is they'll apply, 
housing might send them a letter saying, are you still interested, you know, a ways down the line. If you don't respond to that, you could get dropped. Yes, so. I, I, I well remember uh, <laughs> the anguish in people's voices, yes. you know, about that. I, I also remember anecdotally that uh, we had uh, one of our tenants in, in Harwich uh, come to us with a complaint that uh, uh, she was being, uh, let's see, dis not, let's see, persecuted by the other tenants. Mm -hmm. And she wanted us to move her from there to, uh, to Hyannis. And I said, well, the way it works is tell us who's persecuting you. We'll throw them out. And of course that, you know, that threw a wrench, you know, into the work. So there is, there is some responsibility, you know, that, that you, you, know, you do take. But you're not part of the housing authority. No. So unfortunately, the calls I get are usually people that need a place to move to within, say, 30 days. And senior housing, the waiting list is usually at least a two-year wait. So uh, we had 325 anyone. people on our uh, wa on our waiting list, and one of the uh, one of the significant issues for me was to develop some type of single room occupancy availability for women, because we found that uh, many uh, many women in the community were abandoned. Uh, they had been in long term marriages, and uh, uh, the husband was no longer present, and uh, they th the children were not supporting them and they had no place to go. So I felt that there was a great need, even if it was congregate housing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for, for that mm -hmm. particular, uh, particular group. We were a little bit more successful in getting support for, you know, folks who, uh, for congregate housing for people who are mentally ill. And I wonder what happens in Bourne with something like that. Are you involved with that? Not really, Okay. not really. Uh, so we, we covered, uh, uh, what is SHINE? Is that part of what you do? Shine counseling is um, for Medicare counseling. Okay. So right now it's open enrollment. Open enrollment runs from October 15th to December 7th. Mm -hmm. We have three um, Shine counselor volunteers that have been with us for quite a long time. And you make an appointment with them mm -hmm. and they'll tell you what paperwork to bring in and you, you come in and the, they'll help guide you through the Medicare system. As we know, it changes every year. <laughs> And there's always new rules and regulations. So uh, I, I um, think that uh, I, I was told in the army that don't uh, don't confuse flexibility for confusion. Mm. You know, and there's a lot of that. Now, I did see you a week ago at a breakfast. Um, what were you doing there? So um, myself and Guy Gottschalk, who is a veteran service officer in mm -hmm. Bourne, he and I started a coffee hour once a month. Um, at the community building and we started in June and we had about eight veterans come mm -hmm. and this past month we had 15 so it's slowly growing mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping there's a lot of chatter about more people coming so Guy and I are both you know trying to spread the word we are having a breakfast for the veterans on November 9th mm -hmm. so any veterans out there interested in coming where will Just that breakfast be? At the community building, mm -hmm. catered by Leo's restaurant, and um, any veterans just need to call the Council on Aging and register so that we have a count for food. It seems to me there was a uh, uh, there was a, a gal there who worked at Leo's. Uh, and she I don't know, I don't know if she was a veteran, but uh, I know that uh, um, you know. I did recognize her as you know somebody you know from the community that was participating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, supporting veterans and uh, Gottschalk is a veteran service officer and um, he is covering not j just born but also some Wareham. 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 Now um, do you, if, he, if you needed to make an appointment with him does he go through you? Has he outreach? No. Um, he has his own extension through okay. the town and people can call him and schedule an appointment directly. He also does walk-ins He's there Wednesday, 8.30 to, I believe, 4. Okay. And he's there Thursday afternoon, 1.30 to 4. Yeah, that, that's very important for people, you know, that people know that they can walk in because sometimes making an appointment is kind of intimidating for some folks. Right. Yeah, no, so we're covering uh, veterans. We're covering uh, housing. We're covering, um, have we talked about food insecurity? We touched we on a little bit. Yeah, a little, little bit. bit. Okay. A, a little uh, bit. 
and uh, homelessness. We haven't talked about that. How are you supporting homelessness? So homelessness has been um, rising in the town of Bourne. The numbers have really been going up. Really? Um, so I've been helping several um, homeless people. Um, I work with someone from Housing Assistance Corporation in mm -hmm. Hyannis who yes. is, um, she strictly deals with homeless. So we have a really good working relationship. I also started an Elders at Risk working group with the police and fire department, housing, health. board of health, um, someone from um, NAMI, and I'm trying to think if anyone else comes well, I used in. to be on the Hack, state board of yeah. NAMI, you know, years ago. Uh, it's a very, National Association of the Mental, for the Mentally Ill. Exactly. It's a very, a very important organization to, mm -hmm. you know, that advocates for, you know, for those folks. Right. Yeah. So uh, now we on, all on are. The, on the outreach for the police, what specifically uh, uh, is your intention to do with the police as far as elder support? Well, they're, the police are doing more and more outreach as well. So we've had some um, different people in town that we're working together mm -hmm. to collaborate services. No, my, my aunt lives in Marion and uh, she's 95 and uh, I, I uh, have the, uh, the privilege to, you know, to, to support her for the, some rides that she needs to, things like her infusions and things like that. But in, in Marion, they have a very interesting police program and I would promote it to you, which was uh, she has to call in every morning and if she doesn't call, the police show up at the door saying, are you okay? So it's like a wellness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and I, think, I think it's a wonderful program. And in your, and I would ask you in your conversations with the police, ask them if they would, you know, if that's something that they feel that uh, they'd be able to do. Because mm -hmm. uh, a couple of times when I've called and I haven't been able to reach her, I'll call the police and say, did my aunt call in this morning? And she had, and it, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a great form of, uh, let's say, oh, oh, thank God, everything is okay. So uh, right. not only the people that you're directly helping, but mm -hmm. also the people that are, are part of their support team, you know, that could use, you know, a, you know, a little bit of extra support to make sure that uh, everything's okay. All right, what else is covered in your outreach group? Um, you, you're, you're the group, right? So I do a lot of um, home visits oh. to homebound seniors. Um, I do a lot of referrals. Are you a nurse? No, oh, okay. no. Um, I do a lot of referrals to elder services for Meals on Wheels, laundry service, grocery shopping, oh, homemaking, um, referrals to, you know, all different. Okay. On, on the, talk a little bit about the Meals on Wheels. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when I was a county commissioner, we put some money in the budget to sort of supplement some of the, you know, some of the costs of the, of the uh, you know, of the food. Elders Services is what? They're down in Dennis? They're down in Dennis. Okay, yeah. Now, uh, how does somebody become qualified for Meals on Wheels? Uh, Meals on Wheels, um, I, I, don't, I don't think there's any income guidelines for that. Well, that's what I'm, I want right. folks to know. Right, but they, they have to go through Elder Services. And, and they to have register. to basically be homebound because right. you have to be home to receive the meal. Right. Right. Um, and Meals on Wheels is also a really good well check for seniors oh, yeah. because if they don't answer the door, then they call and do a well check. So that's another really good safety precaution. So people shouldn't be reluctant to look into that. Absolutely not. Yeah. No. And, th and that's part of the reason why Kari started the Elders at Risk work group because, you know, rescue or sometimes they'll have people on their radar far before we would, mm -hmm. you know, and so to keep the communication going throughout the town so we are in tune to, you know, who needs our services. Mm -hmm. um, is there any tales that we've, uh, let's say, Elder Services, uh, Meals on Wheels, was there anything that we left out on that to tell folks about? Not that I can think of. Every, every organization needs a manager, and that's what you are, right? <laughs> yeah, so, so some of the other things we, um, other services that we have available are elder law attorneys. That they come in pro bono once a month, and they'll meet with um, folks to go over. Um, they might have housing issues. South Coast Legal comes in and does those. Um, we have attorney Mello and attorney Lavender that come in once a month and they'll meet with folks for, you know, estate planning or any kind of 
you know. What do they charge for this stuff? They don't. It's pro bono. So okay, and how do you? Well, now that, I think that's very interesting. <laughs> so how do, how so do you, you qualify you, for that? You you just a senior and born. That's all. So you just call and make an appointment at the Council on Aging. They're in only once a month, and they take about four people um, each time that they come in. Mm -hmm. So we have that available. We have domestic abuse counseling available. We have um, ah, on the domestic abuse. Mm -hmm. um, that was a uh, that seems to be a continuing issue in Barnstable County, mm -hmm. uh, and it's not just. Uh, what I'd call sp uh, spousal abuse or partner abuse, uh, there's a lot of, there seems to be a growing abuse of seniors. Well, right. I mean, there's all kinds. There's, you know, um, verbal abuse, financial abuse. Um, it's not just physical abuse. It could be mental abuse. You know, there's all types of abuse that get put on seniors, for sure. Absolutely. Do so. you think you're getting the calls from everybody that needs that help? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So, so I think I think in a program like this, you know, we ought to encourage people if they feel as though sure. It's and we, and to we them. have a counselor that's from Independent House down in um, Independence oh, House sure. down in. Uh, th yeah, she's there them, once yeah. a month. Oh. Um, we also have a financial planner who comes in and helps people with that pro yeah. bono once a month. So we offer a lot of free services to seniors to kind of guide them through. So you've got Medicare. You've got. Um, you know, SNAP and fuel assistance. We've got elder law. Okay, what does SNAP stand for? SNAP stands for? SNAP, SNAP. is food stamps. Mm -hmm. Serving nutritional... Uh, adults. Adults. Uh, uh, I'm not really sure program. what the acronym is, but, um, but that's food stamps. That's what okay. it stands for. And that's how you would get your EBT card. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, on the EBT card eligibility, is there any anything you can say about what a, and not a floor, but let's say what a... Uh, a threshold is for being qualified for that? I don't have those numbers with me. Okay. Now, one of the things that I had seen, you know, many years ago, we had some folks come in from, from Boston to talk about the real cost of, uh, uh, let's say, of, of being, a, being a single parent. Uh, uh, we got figures from the Women's Industrial Union, I think, and it turned out that uh, the figures that the federal government used for determining uh, your uh, Raising a poverty child. level mm -hmm. uh, was uh, something like about 30 percent um, higher, or you know, no, excuse me, lower than it should be because it didn't take into account the real expenses you know that people face. Uh, mm -hmm. When you're doing your evaluation, uh, what do, what do you see if, uh, about stuff like that? So if people think that they're close to the number, <clears throat> they should always apply because if people have a lot of medical expenses, that can figure offset. into it and offset um, their income. So people should always apply. I have, I have the opinion that uh, if you feel as though you need help, that you should ask for it. But at the same time, if you don't need help, you should not ask for Well, you know, it's interesting that you say that. You know, I think um, people think of the Council on Aging and they'll be like, that's not for me. I've had 85-year-olds say to me, that's for, for a bunch of old people. I'm 85. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's for anybody really over 60. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, with the food stamps and the fuel assistance, that's any age. Mm -hmm. So that we assist with that because we are the human service agent for the, for the town. So... Um, you are the human service the agent. The only for human the town. service agent that's on, on the in the town, right? Okay. So we have a human services um, committee um, that we. It's a grant program, and that we. Um, I sit on that committee, and we we. There are all kinds of human service agencies throughout Cape Cod. Mm -hmm. Born included the food pantry is one. Alzheimer family support. Um, you know, all different human service agencies that apply for those grants every year and they're awarded money. There's money put aside. Okay, in the so, town and, and you're a, uh, let's say, a, a, a part of the, mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's say, analyzing the worthiness of the, yep. of the request. Yeah, so then we, we do that, but also human services as far as fuel assistance and SNAP applications, we also handle that for all ages, not just 60 and over. Okay. Now, when I look at the community center, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, uh, it is the Veterans Community Center. The Veterans Memorial Community, Community Center. Center. <laughs> yeah, I know I ran for it, you know, for trustees once. Um, the, um, uh, it's important for me to understand that you don't run the community center. 
No, no. So and I think that people, you know, I, my first thought was, well, council of aging runs this, but you don't. There are three eight. There are three town departments that okay. are in the community building. Um, that is the rec department, the council on aging, and the veterans agent. Okay. Are all yeah. Mm -hmm. And and um, so, the veterans agent is a part timer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and what's the other agency? The rec department. Rec department. Uh, that's that's. I think that's full time. Yeah, the, okay. there's, and, two, and there's, you're two, there's two people. Yep, and we're okay. full time. All right, and, and the rec department is, uh, is that where you would go for, uh, uh, I want to sign up for yoga or something like that? Well, the C Council on Aging has fitness programs. So we have yoga, chair yoga, balance and conditioning, senior fitness, um, recreational programs um, for the children. Um, they also run, uh, the, the rec department does that, but they also run all the pickleball. That's a, that's a recreational. Pickleball has become very controversial lately. <laughs> there, yes, it's yeah. very anyway. popular, and, and they're looking to expand out in the back there and, mm -hmm. um, and redo that for the whole community. Well, when, so. when I was doing substitute teaching in, mid, in middle school, I, uh, pickleball seemed to be an opportunity for people to get off on somebody else, you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it, it's it, very popular. Yeah, very, very popular. Very, very popular. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what other, uh, in terms of uh, what people like to do, uh, what, what is the next most popular activity, or let's say in a list of priorities, um, what would you our, say? Our is fitness one to programs, I would say, are very popular. Um, our chair exercise and medita sound meditation is full every single what week. Is it? Chair exercise and sound meditation. Sound meditation? Sound meditation. And is that yes. the mm. oh, <laughs> mm. <laughs> Yes. Sherry Best does a wonderful the job. 60s, yeah. Yeah. Um, we also have dementia friendly programs, so we have dementia friendly exercise. Um, we have a connection cafe, which is a memory cafe for folks with memory issues and their care partners. I saw to come something. Once a I month. saw something mm -hmm. uh, in your bulletin which mm -hmm. you've been carrying. Which you, you should mm -hmm. show people so mm -hmm. they see what it's like. Oh, that's but, the bulletin. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, there are a lot of folks that do have hardening of the arteries and have dementia. Uh, how would either that person, in a moment of clarity, or somebody who is a significant other? Uh, hook them up for this? So they would call the Council on Aging and they would call um, Sherry Best at um, 5230 is her extension. Mm -hmm. And they would register for the, um, the Memory Cafe, the Connection Cafe. She also does um, the intake that, you know, they have to register for the dementia friendly programs mm -hmm. and they come in and they do exercise with her as well. Um, we also have Alzheimer Family Support that mm -hmm. comes in once a month and they run a, f um, a family caregiver and companion group. Mm -hmm. So the folks afflicted with Alzheimer's and dementia go in one group, they go in one room um, with counselors, and then the caregivers get um, a support group of their own. Mm. So, and we host that once a month as well. Yeah, I, I know that uh, you mentioned NAMI. Uh, I know that one of the problems that, uh, and at the time, my wife was a president of uh, uh, the local NAMI group, and then mm -hmm. she was involved with the Citizens Advisory for, you know, for DMH. Uh, you know, for a while, that um, a lot of the uh, people are parents who are aging out, and uh, and is that uh, uh, we have a growing population of mentally ill, and uh, the expectation is that their family will take care of them, but their family is getting exhausted. Mm -hmm. So, do you have relief programs that are built into your council on aging for those folks? Because so, the dementia well, program those is are some of those like dementia yeah. programs that I, I mentioned. There's yeah. also we can refer them to. Um, there's an adult day health over in Wareham, and there's also one in Mashpee. So, oh. if they need further services, day services we can refer them to those two agencies. Well, that, that's wonderful that they mm -hmm. do have that now because I know that we talked about stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know, back in the dim distant past, mm -hmm. and it is very important that they're available to people. Mm -hmm. And if people wanted to find out more about that, would they call you, Carrie? They can call me or they can call Sherry. Okay, mm -hmm. and, they, and, and that way they can find out about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, well, um, one of the things that happens in a program like this is, you know, that we, uh, we go through it and we cover a lot of things. So one of the things I'd like you to talk about is what would be um, some of the more important programs that, you know, that you're running that, uh, d that you think deserve more support and give some of the reasons why they, you know, why they do. Um, that deserve more support as far as it, you know, as far as uh, community awareness and participation. Yeah, uh, well, you know, COVID changed the way we did oh things, God. Yeah. and it shut us down for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And you know, the two years prior to that, we had the big flood and we were shut down. So you know, 
it's you know it's slowly coming back and bringing people back into the building we know we used to have a dining program um, the former cook retired that was a contracted position mm -hmm. my hope my number one goal for we're going to go into the budget talks for fy um, 24 pretty soon and my number one goal is to bring in someone to manage a dining program and for when us. you're talking to the count with the finance department tell them <laughs> it's a corporal work of mercy to feed the hungry <laughs> So, you know, and we know that's what brings folks in, food, right? So we try and have as many programs as we can that do um, have food. We have a coffee talk program that's mm. so, it's a social club, and they come in, they have coffee, they talk, they talk about the horoscopes, they do a little um, exercise. Daily They're, Chronicle. Daily see, Chronicle. M my son is in, uh, was it, uh, in, in, or in orbit, and I don't understand where, you know, wh you know whether my mercury is, you know. Uh, <laughs> well, it's, it, it's to engage mm. yeah, conversation, no, that, and, yeah. and they'll do a little trivia. Um, and, you know, they have coffee and, and donut or muffin and, you know, so, you know, we know the food brings the people in. So well, I've that's, never been that's to our a, number one goal is to bring back a dining it, program. It's interesting you say that because I've never n never gone to a human service related meeting that did not have food. That's right. Okay. <laughs> it was like they figured this out. We know out. our target audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, that's yeah. why I think the Veterans Coffee Hour has been so popular, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And it's it's wonderful bringing gentlemen, uh, not that there aren't women veterans, because of course there are. My godmother was a WAC for a sergeant. There you go. So, my, but, it, you know, to just bring everybody nurse. in and, yeah. you know, it's bringing a lot more men to the building. VNA runs programs for men's fitness. So we've really been, we have a basketball shootout hour that's on Monday. So we tried to target mm -hmm. um, our fellows because when I look at the demographics and when I look at the numbers, it's, you know, can go like 69 to 32, <laughs> you know, somewhere around there. So, um, you know, the ratio between women versus men. So um, we do have a lot more females, but we're trying to bring more men in. Um, and we know that will happen with food, <laughs> quite right. frankly, we, we, we well, know I'll, that. Well, I'll also tell you that uh, it, once women get involved in things, they do tend to bring people with them, mm -hmm. and uh, they seem to be more, uh, not uh, crowd-oriented, but more... Social. Uh, social, <laughs> yeah, because, yeah. you know, a guy is basically, oh, I don't need that crap, you know, I'm on my own, I can take care of myself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but... When you really grow up, you understand that we live in a social culture, and uh, that's what we have. Yeah. Okay. Well. Um, and, and the one thing I did want to mention is that um, we are turning 50 years old this month. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll big anniversary. 1972. Where were you in 72? <coughs> so we are. We're having an anniversary celebration on November 2nd at 930. Mm -hmm. At the community center. At the center. community center. There will be mm -hmm. breakfast. There mm -hmm. will be door prizes, there'll be t-shirts, there'll be lots of fun. T-shirts? So. T-shirts, yes. Oh, wow, so uh, I, can, yeah. I can another use them on those thousand t-shirts. Is <laughs> yeah. it going to have the Bourne Bridge on it? Uh, no, maybe the train bridge will be the on because our logo right. yeah. is the train yeah. bridge. You have to call and that, sign yeah. up. Though. You have to call and sign up. You have to register because we need to count. Okay. Now, believe it or not, we only have a few seconds. Okay. Uh, what would be the main takeaway that you'd like to leave with folks? Um, that, you know, we are here and available for any kind of question that you may have, you know, as you get older, um, especially with Medicare, it's open enrollment right now mm. and navigating that system is really difficult. And if it, you it, have it, food insecurity or you need help with food stamps or housing applications or fuel assistance, please call us. And if you're just looking to come and have some yoga or go to yo Reiki or looking for some more social interaction, we have book clubs and Mahjong and Canasta. Mm -hmm. We have lots of activities. And so folks, take, take them up on that offer. Show up and participate. I want to thank my guests today. Thank you for Debbie having us. and Carrie for coming Thank in you. and talking about the Council on Aging. And I hope all of you have found out a little bit more that you, that you didn't know. And this has been a, this, this has been a, a, a production of Born TV.